Hi folks, I'm Evan Bonus. Uh, that's a picture of me scavenging cardboard for an urban farm in my hometown, Winnipeg, Manitoba. I study at UBC's Institute for Resources, Environment, and Sustainability, and with the help of the Public Scholars Initiative, my research uses ethnographic videos to explore and possibly support the development of food sovereignty through urban agriculture. What's food sovereignty? It's a global social movement that emerged in the 1990s in response to some of the more devastating livelihood impacts unfolding on peasant farmers in the global south left by the transnationalization of capital in the food system. A social movement is when people come together to collectively change something they find problematic, but it's usually outside the traditional political system or mainstream economics. Food sovereignty means the right of peoples, indigenous farmers, women, peasants, and others, to self-determine the production, processing, distribution, and consumption of food. The history of the concept resides in peasant mobilization, that's demonstrations, rallies, events, transnational networking. This picture is from the Landless Farmers Movement in Brazil, one of the main players in the food sovereignty movement. Some of the folks here at the Food Sovereignty Research Group working with Dr. Hannah Whitman have started to develop a framework to summarize what kind of food system food sovereignty advocates are fighting for. So food sovereignty as a vision can be thought of as a broad social transformation through agro-systems change built on the principles of empowerment ecology and equity. Why do I call it a struggle? Because the food sovereignty movement, in many locations, contexts, and using different tactics, seeks to resist intense, often life-threatening challenges to a way of life for people that are estimated to produce about 70% of the world's food. It's a social struggle against the enclosure of the commons, against the commodification of food, land, and life. These struggles include constrained access to land, gender violence and inequality in rural communities, fair wages for farm laborers and food industry workers, food insecurity, habitat destruction, biodiversity loss, access to water, access to seeds, farmer exposure to hazards like pesticides, and then there's the impact that climate change is going to have on all of this. So to summarize, there's a groundswell of rural opposition around the world that's erupted mostly within the past two decades to what can be called the globalization of the corporate industrial food regime. That's all of the institutions involved in bringing us supermarket variety and supermarket prices along with the food chain of environmental and social harms that span the globe in their wake. This groundswell is primarily rural. Food growers and provisioners are the ones who face the brunt of food system problems head on, and they're also leading the charge for food sovereignty. But it's also transnational in that it crosses scales. And so today I'm among the academics trying to figure out what's the place of urban folks in this movement. This isn't to say that we don't have a food movement here in urban environments of the global north. We do. There are urban food activists, food champions, food citizens, and urban farmers who work to challenge problems in the food system. But their efforts tend to look a little different from food sovereignty activism. It's less radical, you could say. There are some radical folks and radical projects within the food movement here, but it has a different flavor. I'd argue that this is because urban food activism is primarily organized around a different principle than food sovereignty activism in that it's linked with consumption, not production. While the rural food sovereignty movement is led by producers in the global south, in the global north, the food movement votes with its food dollars to better the food system via buying local or organic. And of course, this comes along with some strong critiques. The food movement tends to get dismissed as elitist, classist, even racist and otherwise exclusionary. And for good reason, participation in this movement often requires privilege, including having disposable income to spend on more expensive food or time to dedicate to preparing food or growing your own. I'm not saying that urban food movements aren't supporting positive changes, they are, but I would argue that if the goal is radical transformation, especially towards democratic empowerment and social equity for rural folks and sustainability for rural ecologies, we're going to need to join the food sovereignty movement. So my question is, how do we support urban mobilization into rural struggles for food sovereignty? Theoretically speaking, this means we need to find a way to close what scholars call the metabolic rift. This is essentially the historical divide that's developed between agricultural activity and its impacts, which are typically rurally situated, and the forces that drive them, which are typically urban in origin. So my follow-up question is, can urban agriculture bridge this gap? Urban agriculture refers to producing food in and around cities and towns. It's a diverse social practice ranging from large-scale commercial urban farms to the individual gardener who grows a few squash plants on a vacant lot. Participants in urban agriculture pursue a range of goals too, from personal enjoyment to reducing food security to education to building social capital. 
Cities have always been detached from the spaces that produce their food, and so they've always been detached from the impacts of agricultural production. In bringing the country to the city, it's possible that urban agriculture provides a way to experience rural struggles indirectly within the city, recoupling urban and rural identities in a common goal for food systems transformation. But it's the other direction that I'm more interested in. How can we bring energy from the city back out to the country to support the challenges in rural environments for producers struggling against ecological harm, social inequality, and disempowerment? What are the social mechanisms for getting involved and how can they be supported? I also love film. I teach about film. I like to talk about film. I like to make films. So I'll be using ethnographic film methods to study the experiences of urban farmers and advocates who straddle the urban-rural divide. These are people who bring the city back to the country through urban agriculture by reconnecting urban folks to nature and to rural struggles. And then I want to screen these films about urban agriculture to explore whether the films themselves can bring the city to the country. And so in my dissertation work, film is both a method of analysis and a tool for social change. It's my hope that these videos will support a shift away from what urban folks can do as consumers to mobilizing for food sovereignty. And that's why I couldn't be there today to present this to you. I'm in Brazil right now learning how to speak Portuguese, and I'm connecting with a community group here that's embedded urban agriculture within its mandate to support the struggle for food sovereignty. So this organization bridges the urban-rural divide in an effort to close the metabolic rift. So the next time you see something from me, maybe it'll be a video about how urban agriculture is helping shape political activists who write letters to politicians, or who help fundraise for peasant organizations, or even people who make videos about ways to bring the city to the country to defend a more just and sustainable food system for everyone, both rural and urban.